There we go. Catch you on the rebound. Hey, man, I am in Taipei, Taiwan. You make some noise for that, man? I'm out here. Um, finally found me a studio that I could use, man. Shout out to the Sound Moon apartment. Uh, this is where I'm going to be hosting the show from. And um, we're just going to call this one the, introdu the introductory episode. Um, I've had all of my episodes uh, with a guest, but I've never actually had an episode that's, that's just me. That's just Jordan. You know what I'm saying? So this is the introductory episode. So um, where am I at in my life right now to kind of explain to y'all like what Catch You On A Rebound means to me? So if I could kind of sum it all up, uh, use these words, just, just trust. Uh, faith over reason and um, that's basically saying that don't really like trust your sight don't don't trust what's around you and like what you see every day like you got to be moved by the vision you got to trust the vision of like what's to come of like what you kind of like manifest in your, in your head so like one thing that I realized that I had to, to do was um, I had to create like a vision board so like back when I was, when I was in high school, um, the Sharps, they started making like signs at my basketball games and I would look into the stands and I would see the sign and I'd be like, okay, this is, all right, this is like, this is a big deal. You know what I'm saying? Maybe like something can come from this. Maybe can, something can come from me playing basketball. Maybe there's a, a bigger picture and uh, there's more. There's more than what I can just see. So um, from what I realized with the signs was that uh, almost like you have to see it to believe that it's true. Like if you want to be successful, like if you want to accomplish anything, well, well, first you ask yourself like, what does it look like? You know, and like for some people like it's a car, for some people like it's a house, it's a, a neighborhood. So I just, you know, I created a, uh, I would take old magazines. I would, we had so many magazines in my house. And uh, I would cut up, cut up different things. And eventually, like, I'm going to want to find my uh, my vision board that I made. And um, I'll, I'll, I'll find a way to, uh, to copy it and, and give that out, you know, to, to people that are with me. But this podcast is about um, mental health. So just spending a lot of time like kind of like on my own overseas 10 months at a time sometimes it's a little less but typically it's about nine to ten months overseas uh if you don't have a family or children then you kind of spend that time by yourself you are a foreigner in another country and uh it's definitely a it's, it's a big battle it's, a, uh, it's difficult you know what i mean it's, it definitely has its perks you know like playing basketball overseas you're a professional athlete um, so it definitely like it has its perks. You have fans. Uh, you get to play the game. You get to make a living. You get to earn a living. Um, but definitely, um, there's many nights, many nights. Just just a couple of days ago, like I probably slept an hour. You know, like my mind was just up. Like, um, like what is the future? Uh, basketball is like a so it's, it's the body business. So you only gonna last as long as your body allows you. You know, uh, so God willing, I got another five to ten left in me. You know what I'm saying? But one thing that I that I learned that I realized, and I actually took this from uh, Pharrell, definitely somebody that I look up to. And he was like, um, they was talking about like cars and the foreign cars and the first couple cars that he had got when he got successful. Um, but one thing he said is like, um, like we all want to see ourselves behind the wheel of that. Or that foreign car, or whatever, whatever it is you think that you want, but he said to create a vehicle that will take you where you want to go. So um, that is that is kind of my goal with Catch You on the Rebound with this mental health podcast. Uh, and it's so much, it's so much more than that, man. It's just um, it's another outlet that allows me to to kind of like to free up, free up what's going on in my mind and just uh, interact with whoever you know. Uh, it's just asking themselves, like, what's going on with JT? What's going on with Jordan out there in Taiwan? Like, I wonder what it's like. 
well, come tap in with me and catch you on the rebound. You know what I'm saying? We can rap. You know, I'll go live or whatever if you hit me or if you want to be on the show. Um, you know, just hit me. There's, there's many ways to reach me. Uh, Instagram, uh, Facebook, Twitter. There's, there's many ways to reach me. Um, email. Uh, yeah, and we can, we can, uh, we can rap. There's definitely a couple of different topics that I want to, I want to speak about. Uh, so today, just, just think something that I, that I, I took this from, uh, Simon Sinek. You know, no Simon Sinek, uh, it would benefit you to look his name up and, uh, what's your why. I'll start with why. I think that's the name of his book. But one of the things that he spoke about was, um, he said infinite and, and finite games, but uh, an infinite game is, is a game that never ends, kind of like how Kobe spoke about, um, not really worried about like the wins and the losses. And uh, he just, he playing the game to learn. So like, once I heard that, I kind of adopted that, uh, adopted that to my life. I adopted that to the basketball. I adopted it to, you know, whatever I'm, whatever I'm going up or dealing with uh, throughout my life is like, there's no, there's no wins and losses. Like everything is a, everything is something to be gained. Every, every experience that you have, um, every attempt, whether it's a failed attempt or whether it's a, a successful attempt, it's, 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 it's something to gain. And uh, to quote, I think Andre Emmett, I got this from Baylor Barbie, and he said, uh, misses are just as important as the makes. So like I made my career off of rebounds, which is why I like, catch you on the rebound. It's so, such a, uh, such a, a bold statement, like catch you on a rebound. Um, I make my living off of uh, other people's misses and other people's uh, shortcomings. So like a, a rebound is when somebody misses the shot. You know what I'm saying? So that's just the way that I see things. It's like catch you on the rebound. It's like as every time I every time I attempt something, whether it's it's, it's, it's good or bad there's something to be taken from it. There's a, there's a rebound. There's something to, to gain from every attempt uh, that you take. Like, so, um, having a fixed mind or having an unfixed mind. Like, a, my mind is, I always say things like, I'm a hypocrite. Uh, because as soon as I believe something to be true, as soon as I'm like, all right, this is what it is, or, or that situation is what it is, and that's how it's always gonna be. And I need to wrap my head around that. Like, life will show me something different. And then a lot of times I say, like, you can never say never because you never know what position life will, will put you in. You never know what you'll be forced to do that you never thought you would have to do. But uh, sometimes you don't really have a choice. So uh, some kind of like things like that. Um, these are just a, these are just a few questions that I've that I've taken. And I wanted to make sure that I, um, I, I get to, to some of these questions because some kind, sometimes I, I kind of tend to ramble, but I definitely wanted to make sure that I, I, I get through to these questions. Um, so at what age do you see fulfillment and have you reached it yet? Um, I don't really see it as an age, man. I definitely think it's like somewhere uh, in the 30s, but uh, I would definitely say fulfillment will be kind of... Um, that, that sense of like family and foundation. You know what I mean? Definitely that uh, for anybody. Like it can, it, it can be a relationship, it can be marriage, it can be children, but uh, it can also be like community, like finding that place where, where like, okay, this is, this is where I'm supposed to be. This is why every other place or every relationship or, or everything that I've tried didn't work. It wasn't right because I wasn't in the in the right place. So um, definitely, uh, I'm close. You know what I mean? Like I'm I'm close, and I just I, I had to constantly remind myself that like, even with this, um, I let it started like talking to my brother. Man, my brother is actually getting released in 16 days, April 20th. And then my mom's birthday is two days after that, man. So definitely, like, big ups to my brother, man. Like, uh, I, I, I saw him one day, and I'm leaving. And he just came outside to, you know what I'm saying, to check on, check on a little bro. And he said, catch you on the rebound. 
I didn't really think nothing of it, man. And this is like, this is this is maybe 18, 19, I'm 28 now. Um, so just to speak about like, just to be honest, like my family structure, like dad passed. That was my whole, that was my whole experience with uh, trauma. You know what I'm saying? Like death is the, that's the, death is the best teacher. You know what I mean? Of life because your parents, you know what I mean? And your coaches, and we have all of these people like teachers who are, who are um, they supposed to be role models, but really they just kind of there to, uh, to navigate you and kind of give you some direction, some order, because we all need order. Um, losing my dad, I'm like, for five, maybe good, it's been eight years and sometimes like it still don't feel like it's real. Like sometimes it still feel like, man, like he's just gonna come back. But you know, I've, I've, I've gotten to the point to where I realized like it had, it served its purpose. And um, I don't think that I would be who I am or who I'm becoming had my dad not passed. So um, I just had to, I had to forgive myself. I had to forgive God. I was angry with God for so long. Uh, I was bitter. I was bitter about a lot of stuff. You know what I mean? But I realized like I wouldn't have been who I am. I wouldn't have became the person I was supposed to be had he not left. And uh, that's real. So absence is a better teacher. Absence is the best teacher because uh, when the people not in your ear, you don't have that, that foundation around you, that's when it's really a time time to apply everything that you've been uh, taught. And uh, it's gonna see, it's gonna, it's gonna test you. You know what I mean? So, uh, dad passed Keith Garnett. Uh, Keith Garnett had worked with the Houston Rockets and worked with some, some NBA guys. Uh, he recommended that I, I seek counseling, seek therapy. Um, my first therapist was uh, Sheila. This is a Lubbock, Texas, uh, 2012, I wanna say. So I start to see Sheila and at that point, like I'm still really, I'm, I'm closed off. Like I'm closed, I'm, I'm, I'm not sharing much with her. You know what I'm saying? She's pulling, she's pulling, but I'm not, like, who are you? Like, I don't know you. Like, I don't know you. So I went, that was my first experience, um, but I was, I was very, very, very closed off with her. Um, I ended up making the decision to leave Texas Tech and uh, come to, move to Dallas and go to SMU um, Dallas is 45 minutes from Fort Worth. That's my hometown. Lubbock was five hours. Um, although that's one of like the, the biggest regrets of my life leaving Tech. Like I also had to get over. I also had to get over that because that was that was even holding me back. It's, it's funny like how your thoughts work. So I had this. Uh, I had this big guilt. I had this big guilt of like man. Like what could have been had I stayed? Because I see Tech uh, go to the tournament, go to the national championship, and I'm like, man, like I was there. I was there like when it wasn't cool to go to Texas Tech. Like I made the decision to be there and to have left like right before uh, they turned back up it was just like, you know, what I mean, it was something that just lingered on my mind, but I had to realize like. If as long as you think that uh, that something is the best, then you won't be able to see past that. So I had to let that go. I had to let that go. And I got to SMU and Larry Brown was there and it's close to home and my sister is having a baby. So now I'm an uncle and I get to be there and be around that and be around family. So in my head, it was a, it was a good move. You know what I mean? Uh, all around and I met some great people. You know what I mean, and I learned a lot of things. 